Ladies and gentlemen, welcome or welcome back to the JKWD podcast, where we hope you are getting better every day. And that's what today's episode is about. But so far, how are you doing, Kelvin? Doing good. Good. Excellent day. Pretty out here and um, alive and healthy and having a good time. How about you? Doing great over here. Uh, yeah, I did a we make plans. God laughs thing this morning. I you know, decided to sleep in and, you know, pay attention to the weather forecast. It said, we're going to have a nice, cool, rainy morning. And then I woke up and found out we we're not going to have a nice, cool, rainy morning. And so my run was a little hot and humid, but yeah, Hey, <laughs> you know, whatever we did it. <laughs> Cause we did it through anyway. Yeah. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> Our guest today is Orist, the old guy, the old guy talks to me. Interesting conversation. A lot of fun. I, I, um, there's going to be an E on this episode. Don't listen with little kids. Maybe don't <laughs> listen on the speakers at work. Put your headphones on. Uh, you know, we talk about sex and exercise and uh, uh, being not being a dick, <laughs> I guess, also comes up. Unless it's time to be, because that also comes that up. Also comes up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a good conversation. So. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're gonna not babble too much because we we went probably about an hour and a quarter with with Orist, and uh, we'll just play some music, and on the other side of that, you'll hear our conversation. Enjoy it. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. doing great. Thank you. Good to see you. Good, 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 good. <laughs> so where are you guys located? Okay, Kevin. I'm in, I'm in uh, Liverpool, New York, Syracuse area. Okay. And Josh I'm in Savannah, over. Georgia. Savannah. All right. All right. So I guess, how did you guys connect? Uh, I used to live up there in Syracuse and we met at a, Mutual friends barbecue. What do we figure about two thousand four or so? Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay, great, great. And, and then uh, he left because he got tired of the cold up here, <laughs> and um, we ended up. Uh, you know, and he got a new job, so we ended up just before he left. Um, we just started hanging out every couple of weeks. You know, to have dinner on Friday and something, and then when he moved to uh to savannah we weren't talking locally anymore so we ended up podcast uh uh, talking on zoom and after we did that he's like you know we should do a podcast we we talk about cool stuff we should just so we ended up doing that and we've been doing that now for about 275 issues (laughs) wow that's 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 a while how many many times a week do you guys have, uh, have a podcast out once a week, just once a week. Okay, so, so wow, so you guys been about five, four, and a half five years we've been on this, yeah. 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 So it's, it's been a, it's been a good run, and he hadn't gotten tired of me yet. <laughs> well, I do get the week in between off, so there is there is that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cool. So where are you now? I'm in Las Vegas. Ah, yeah. But, you know, being in Las Vegas is not like visiting Las Vegas. I'm, I, okay. It's a, I'm, I'm in, I'm in an area called Summerlin, which is as is, is suburbia as any other place could be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, I mean, at night we can see the strip from our house, but uh, that's about, that's about it. When you live in Las Vegas, you don't go to the strip except infrequently. Yeah. <laughs> Every every time you have every time you have guests who uh, exactly exactly or or you do a staycation, 
Uh, so, so those, those are always, those are good because you can just drive to your uh, hotel in 30 minutes and be back home in 30 minutes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. We, um, and I, yeah, I've driven through a couple of times and I just, the lights and the, it just looks like not my scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, usually about, you know, even when I was, when I would come up here and visit, it was 48 hours. It was a max. Yeah. 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 It was, that was, that was, that was about it. It was, it was, it was done, but we just, we moved up here about three years ago. So, uh, so it was oh. been pretty nice. So you like well, in the they, desert? Pardon me? You like in the desert? Well, I, we moved from Phoenix, so it's not much. That, oh, that's, not, that, that, that's not that much different. It's actually no. a little bit cool. It's a little bit cooler up here than it is in Phoenix, but not that much either. Oh, cool. Yeah. I guess, you know, to, uh, we always like to ask our guests, you know, what their mission is and, and why that's their mission. And well, my, yeah, well, my mission is pretty much in my tagline, uh, helping older guys create kick-ass lives for themselves and those that they love. And uh, it's partially uh, out of self-interest. I do a lot of stuff. I find out a lot of stuff. I get to interview a lot of uh, interesting people on my podcast, a lot of cutting edge people. And uh, there's stuff that, uh, there's information that I gather that I actually use. Uh, so, so, you know, we've all done that where we've gone to a seminar and taken a bunch of notes and got all excited and come home and, you know, come home Sunday and then Monday, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a gathering dust on, on the bookshelf, but, uh, no, it, it's, it's funny. Cause I get to, it's, it's, I get to talk to people that normally would never have a reason to talk to me, mm-hmm. uh, such as yourselves. You, I mean, you, no reason you'd ever have to talk to me. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and so it, it really is about, it. and then I think that many men get old too soon. And I, I see that, I see that in the gym. I see that in restaurants. They just get too old too soon. And I mean, I'm pretty exciting. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not, that sounds very self, uh, a self-serving, uh, answer, but I, I got a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the time, especially for, I mean, I'm soon to be 69 mm-hmm. and, uh, I, I still got stuff I want to do. And that, I would say that's probably unusual for people in, in my age bracket that they have stuff that they want to do with their life. I want to do one of the things I want to do is go run with the bulls and was it Papillona? Yeah, I want I want to do that. I, I think that's going to be a, a 2022 type of thing because uh, it's already done for this year. But uh, yeah, a friend of mine has done about ten or eleven times, and uh, I want to at least do it once. You, you're not allowed to fall down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to be you got to be in, in shape for that. I um I don't do a lot of exciting stuff, but I, there's a guy I ran across uh, not too long ago named Dan Sullivan, and he put out a uh-huh. book. Um, you know, my plan to live to be 156. So uh-huh. I decided that I want to live to be 156. I just got to stay healthy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That, but his thing is like, if you're not gonna, um, if, if you're thinking about you're going to die at 65, then you're not going to take care of yourself. But if you're going to live a long time, what then? So it sounds like you've got a bit of that philosophy in you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, part of it also is that I watched, uh, my father died, he dying for, uh, over 40 years. <laughs> yeah, he, he was dying for over 40 years. Wow. He, uh, he, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the, that was his approach to life. Uh, consequently there, there, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty honest, but, uh, there's, there, there wasn't really much to show for it in yeah. terms of his life. And, uh, it was just that, uh, he had, emphysema and but he was always dying uh he was dying in 1960 and he uh died in uh 1997 oh, wow. so 37 years uh he outlived five of his doctors he uh got last rites in the catholic church six times and <laughs> So, so, but, but he was all, he was, he was always dying. Like I said, it was, it was just no, it was just, it was, it was kind of, I look at it, I'm going like, you know, now I look at it like, what were you thinking? <laughs> How old was he when he started dying? Uh, he was, let's see, he died, he was uh, 82 when he died. 
And so, so he started. He, he started dying. He, he started dying in his in his thirties, uh, forties. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he started dying. So he was dying for a long time. Yeah. So Ooh. so it was it's kind of a uh, interesting phenomenon. That was <laughs> that was that, that would be its own book. How to take forty <laughs> years to die? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> now, I don't want to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I I I I I already saw I already saw the the, the live play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So when did you start taking that lesson to uh to your life and and how did you become who you are uh, from that? Um, there are several I would call transformational moments. Uh, probably the biggest one was when I got married. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get married until I was forty. I've been married once, you know, and uh, so still married. Uh, we're going uh, 29 years in November, uh, and so it, it uh, that, that was a very transformational moment. And I think also what happened as far as my health goes, uh, it was when my wife had her. I was we were 40. I was 45 when she had our our daughter, first daughter, and I had to make a decision. Uh, I was basically fat. I by people in my family tend to be fat. And I was fat. I was like 240 pounds. I was, you know, uh, built like a Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, you know, I was fat. I mean, my knees hurt. Everything's swollen. And, you know, I wore really loose clothing. And uh, I, was, I, was, I was shaped like a beach ball. And, you know, and I had to make the decision whether I was going to be a grandfather or a father to my kids. You know, at 45, you can start. You can start letting yourself deteriorate, especially if you've, you've seen your your father dying for for, for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's when I started to really start taking care of myself. I think that probably one of the most important things is is your mind and your body are very much connected, and you got to take care of both. And if you think that you can take care of one and not the other, then uh, I'll, call, I'll I'll tell you to your face, you're you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? How's how, I, I've been known. Um, Just tell us. I, what the I, 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 I've been I've been I've, I've been known to be subtle, but not very often. <laughs> <laughs> Who has time anymore? <laughs> yeah, I, really. I, I, as I and I've, I've found myself just lately saying this, and I don't know why, uh, but I, I, I'm just too old to care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I just like, you tell me something. I, I saw a, a YouTube video, some, some, he was having an altercation with somebody in the store and I just look at like, yeah, I can, I can see that. You just, you're just too old to care anymore. You just don't, don't, don't really care. You just, not, I'm not interested in nonsense. I'm not interested in that. It's not, it's not like I go out and try, you know, I don't try to be an asshole and things like that. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not naturally confrontational, but, but on the other hand, it's like, I just don't care anymore. I really, I don't, I don't care what you think. Uh, you know, I, I don't care if, if you don't like what I think, uh, and that's fine. I, I, my life is not dependent on your life. My life is dependent on me. <laughs> yeah, that was a hot to see. How did you get to the point? Cause you know, a lot of people care about what everybody, uh, huh. so how did you manage to get to the point where you didn't, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a really uh, interesting question, Kevin. Uh, it, it happened. I don't know. I think it, I think it happened again some, sometime in, in my forties, uh, fifties, when I became very comfortable in my own skin about who I was. And I, I also became comfortable with my imperfections. There's some things I'll just never change about who I am. I mean, it's just, it's just there's some things that you, you can work on all, you know, 24 seven. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just in your system. Uh, and, and you ain't going to change who you are at your basic core, your operating system. Uh, there's a, a test that I took a person, uh, it's a, it's an assessment test. It's called the Colby a, and the Colby a is a, uh, it, it's, a, it's about your opera. If you guys want, I'll send you a link to it. Uh, the Colby a is about your operating system. Mm-hmm. how you function in the world. And it was very interesting because it, for me, it articulated things that I knew about myself, but, uh, but could not actually verbalize. Mm-hmm. And so, and so it actually gave me a, a, a verbalize some of the things I knew. I had a, a friend 
uh, who took it. He took, he's taken it actually four times. Uh, he, t- he took it when he was uh, actually, he was on the, he was, he was a warm up for Tony Robbins on stage. Uh, mm-hmm. and then, uh, yeah. And then, uh, 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 nine months later, uh, he was selling his road bike so he could buy baby formula. <laughs> he was broke, he got caught up in the, in the, in the real estate crash in 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and then he, he was kind of on his way up and, and now he's bought like a monster house in Laguna beach, but he, he made an interesting comment. He says that I've taken a Colby a four times, you know, when I was flush, when I was broke, and basically drinking vodka in my basement. Uh, da, da, da. And he said, the, the tests were all the same. The results came back all the same because it's your operating system. It's your internal operating system, which doesn't really change. It's, it's uh, so, so it's very interesting. But I just found out a lot of things. About, but yeah, I, I got comfortable and it, it was just a, uh, and the more I got comfortable, the easier it was. That, that's kind of, is that, does that make sense? Because yeah. I think there's a certain tipping point that you get to and then all of a sudden, just become more and more and more comfortable uh, that that you are about about who you are, and 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 at the end of the day, I feel that I'm a good person. Uh, but if you pick if you piss me off, I can become a dick real fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, it's a switch. It's you know, not, based on the pictures on your website, I think I can understand that. I can, yeah, I can yeah, it's, see, it's, I can see that point coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it's not, it's not like it's slowly. It's like, <laughs> 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 like, like, you know, what got into him would be at would, would could be said to, about me sometimes when I, when I if I get angry. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and there's certain things that really uh, uh, make me angry, uh, just rapidly, and I'll I'll say something. It's uh, especially if people being rude, mm-hmm. uh, especially like in a, in a, in a service situation, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, I, or, or whatever. That's that's kind of a, a, a kind of a, a thing with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, it, yeah, but I, I think, you know, just being comfortable and it just happened over time, over time, over time. And because I wasn't always that, I was actually very shy, very, uh, yeah, I know it's kind of hard to believe I was shy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was very shy. Actually, in high school, uh, my senior year, I was so shy. I hardly spoke to anyone. And people thought I was on drugs uh, because I was that shy. And uh, so I'm, I'm not, I'm very, I've become very loud. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm in a room, you generally will tend to know it. Uh, some of it also has to do with uh, being staying vibrant over over time, and, uh, and that I'm a also a big believer because I've talked about this in the past. Uh, I'm a big believer in better living through science. And you know, if you go through, through my uh, uh, podcast episodes, there's lots of uh, I uh, interview lots of doc- doctors and lots of experts on cutting edge technologies and in, in, uh, what's referred to as functional medicine. Now it used to be called anti-aging medicine. Mm-hmm. And I spent a lot of time in that space. I spent a lot of time talking about that kind of stuff uh, and with cutting edge people. So it's uh, stuff that uh, I talk about. Most people won't hear about for another few years. Is that people like um, Dom D'Agostino and yeah, David Sinclair? Dom- uh, Dom, I've had Dom on my show twice. I'm actually going to have him on his his wife on my show. She's also a brilliant person. I, I just got her a bio, and half the words in her bio I have to look up. Uh, <laughs> she, she's, she's, a P, she's a PhD in, in neuroscience, and then a whole bunch of other words that I didn't even, even know what they meant. Uh, it was just like it was it was like yeah. And, and with Dom, I, I actually because I saw him interviewed by someone else. And I, I said, Dom, I said, we, we need to really take the vocabulary down about four. <laughs> take, 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 take me back to the eighth grade. Uh, because I'd like, sometimes I'd have to stop him in, in the middle. I'm like, okay, all right. Could you, could you, uh, because when he was being interviewed by this other woman, what's her name? Rhonda Patrick. She's also sort of a person. Oh yeah. Person. Her too. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, they might've been speaking, they might as well have been speaking Klingon. Uh, yeah. cause, cause they were, they were using words that no one in the audience knew what they meant unless, unless it was somebody in the field. Uh, so I'm Dom DiGostino. Uh, I've interviewed, uh, doctors on the, on the testosterone. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
uh, a few doctors on testosterone and and, and uh, also uh, androgen experts. I've uh, and I'm a great believer. I just for all your uh, listeners, I'm I've been on uh, uh, exogenous t- testosterone for 25 years. Way before way before they started advertising it, and uh, I just my I, I mean. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about it. I just, I just got back from the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, I I had some injuries and working my way back up on, on the, on the free weights. And today I did uh, two sets of uh, 90 pound dumbbells bench press. Wow. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) it it, is soon to be 69. Uh, You know, it's pretty good. I, my, my goal is to get back to where I was at was a hundred. I'm do that by my birthday in October. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, get me a birthday oh, present, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a XL <laughs> <laughs> size 10. And, mm-hmm. and I, and I love uh, uh, Glenn Levitt scotch and uh, L artista uh, cigars, uh, especially the, the big pappy is, is one of my favorites. Uh, so, so yeah, so I'm a big proponent of that. And uh, I think that, you know, when you, if you talk about vibrancy, yeah. um, when I get off of my testosterone, which I did, I've done off and on a little bit here and there uh, for various reasons, including international travel. Uh, the last thing I want to do is have a conversation about my testosterone with a, 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 a customs agent in a foreign country. <laughs> <laughs> Even though everything I do, everything everything I do, just for for purposes, everything I do is is prescription based. Mm-hmm. It's not prescription it's not like, legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I don't buy anything from anybody at the gym or anything like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it became <laughs> the uh, the half life of testosterone cyprinate is eight to ten days. And in just in the conversation, I was in New Zealand with my youngest daughter and uh, my wife was going like, you're really negative. Like day eight and day 10, she goes like, did you take <laughs> testosterone? And I go, no, everything's fine. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a, it's a great move at, uh, elevator. It's, I, I think for, for, uh, for many men, if, if you get on it, you'll find that it is a uh, incredible antidepressant. It's an incredible mood elevator. And uh, most of the time, though, your, your primary care physician will not give you enough uh, to make a difference. And you need to find a good functional medicine anti-aging doctor. And that's going to be a challenge because right now everybody is advertising, uh, you know, testosterone clinics and things like that. And a lot of those places I don't think are, are do a particularly good job mm-hmm. uh, of that. And uh, if you, again, for your audience, uh, I have an interview with Keith Nichols. Uh, he's one of the top uh, 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 testosterone doctors in in the United States, and we go into great detail about what what things are necessary and all that. And the, it's a it's an interesting phenomenon about testosterone is that there is a generational decline of testosterone in males, and uh, it's a, there's a thing called the male normative aging study. That uh, that just goes into great detail about it. And it's been going around for more than just thirty years. Mm-hmm. But l- let's say the uh, just recently on my lab uh, lab report, the high end for the to- uh, for the free testosterone used to be uh, eleven hundred, and they dropped it down to nine sixty. Okay, that's that's a ten percent. That's that's ten percent, maybe a little bit more drop. That's mm-hmm. a huge drop. So what's cons- what they can call normal is the average of unhealthy people. Uh, see, because, and I, I'm still trying to verify this I, I, until I, until I actually see it. Uh, but uh, I had a friend of mine who's in, in this area also told me that uh, about 15 years ago, the high normal was 1500. Hmm. And, and so a lot of doctors are forced to treat to those normal lab ranges. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and, and the normal is not healthy. It's, it's, it's right. So they're, they're unhealthy. trying to get you, they're trying to get you to, uh, to normal, not, not, ha- not optimal, not optimal. Optimized. Right. Uh, optimized. Yeah. And that, uh, there, a, a friend of mine wrote, wrote a book called the uh, uh, testosterone optimization Bible by uh, James J. Campbell. And, uh, it, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a interesting book. Uh, it's highly, 
uh, uh, reference. So there's, there's footnotes. There's multiple footnotes on just about every page, and I think it's like four or five hundred pages long. So it's, it's, it's highly referenced. Uh, and, and Jay is is, is incredible, uh, an uh, incredible guy, and uh, very knowledgeable. But uh, yeah, yeah. So so it's kind of a, a interesting thing, and, and because of this, uh, younger men are having lower and lower testosterone levels. And my friend Keith Nichols told me that he treats basically men with for uh, low testosterone. And he's telling me, he told me, he said, and this is kind of an alarming statistic. He said men in their in their 20s and 30s are showing up with lower baseline levels of testosterone than those that are showing up in this clinic in their 50s and 60s. And a lot of that is is plastics and exactly yeah and, 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 foods foods and, and, and endocrine disrupting compounds yeah and you know the um the fact that we're buying a lot of stuff that says bpa free doesn't mean it's free of other exactly. bad stuff right yeah, it's yeah. free of that one bad thing mm. so yeah i see I start reading more labels now yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, so when did you become the old guy? Uh, since since your your brand is pretty much don't get old. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or or wear your oldness properly, uh, right. proudly, proudly. Um, I, the old guy talks. Uh, actually, start off something is something else, and it's kind of derived. And we're about ready to make a big pivot here soon, also. Uh, but that was about four or five years ago. Okay. And then, and so, so you didn't become the old guy at forty eight. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that was just something. It was, it was a, I was, I knew I was going to be transitioning out and I wanted to, I, I, I knew I wanted to do something creative in, in my previous life. I was a, a, a periodontist, a periodontal regenerative surgeon. And so I knew I wanted to do something completely different. And I've always had this creative side of me, this entertainer side, this, uh, uh, pontificator, <laughs> oh, all that stuff. I, you know, I, I, I love to pontificate. I mean, I just, you know, I, I, and, and I'm an attention whore. Hey, well, when you, when you, know, you got you, your instruments in somebody's mouth and that's a really yeah. good time to uh, yeah. be able to lecture, right? <laughs> actually, 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 you know, I used to get really quiet. I used to get very focused <laughs> and, and actually my assistants used to have to tell the patients like, uh, first of all, uh, I used to sigh a lot. And so they had to like, you know, and, and, and they would just have to tell like when I was doing surgery, because most of the time patients were conscious. Uh, and, that wasn't and a bad si- one. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, and so my, my, my sister would say, okay, when the doctor is working, he sighs a lot. That doesn't mean anything. It's just that he just takes big breaths and takes big exhales. He just, it doesn't, <laughs> it, it does not mean anything. It's just, I've been, he's been doing it for decades and that's just how he operates. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so I, I, I got into that and I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, as, as I said, uh, the old guy was, uh, old guy talks, uh, was just kind of like, you know, I was, it started when I was about 60, well, probably about in, in my early sixties. And, uh, then it kind of just kind of grew and morphed and changed just like, you know, all things kind of morph and change after a while. Yeah. yeah Cause I, yeah, I'm on roughly the, the same path. You were. I got married at 38. We had our first daughter when I was 42. I'm 44 now, so um, you know, 44 with a two and a half year old. Uh, after you know, a year in quarantine, I was getting up near 190 pounds. I'm, I'm five foot two, so that's uh, you know that, yeah. that's up there. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I I signed up for four long races. Uh, you know in the fall and winter. So I'm, um, I'm back on the exercise path, but, uh, yeah, I, I was, I'm currently right where you were. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it's, so it's interesting to, you know, kind of, kind of see where you were a generation ago and, and, and now what you're yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, part of it, that was when I, uh, when I really made that change was also the time that I started, uh, my testosterone optimization. Uh, I, I had some friends that were into that. They were in, you know, really into this whole uh, 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 anti-aging stuff, and uh, they kind of got me squared away and all that. But I, I just, you know, it's it's a it's an interesting thing uh, having young kids at an older age. Mm-hmm. For me, it was it was really uh, uh, I was done partying. Mm-hmm. I was done being single. I was done going out. I was done all that. I was, I was ready to be a husband and a father. 
So I didn't feel like staying home was not like a, it, for some, especially I think if you're younger, staying home may be like punishment. Right. <laughs> like being grounded, except you're grounded with your kids. Uh, for me, that was a lot of fun. And the other advantage of it was that we were constantly, uh, because you become friends with your with the uh, your kids' friends' parents, right? And so we were always around people that were 10, 15 years younger than we were. Yeah, you know, that was that was just that was just the case, which which in, in a lot of ways had had a lot of benefits to being uh, younger. Uh, it's funny. My wife said she didn't realize she didn't realize how young I was until we went to my 45th high school reunion <laughs> and she did that. And that, that, that was when, that's when she saw it. That's, that's when she saw a bunch of 60 year olds and what they yeah. look like. <laughs> she goes like and that was part of it was because we were always around really young people, right. you know, fit and everything else. Mm-hmm. So it, was, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of funny in that regard. Well, and I mean, you're in the gym and you're taking testosterone. Yeah. We look at, uh, you know, I look around at some of the older people in my life and you know we've got you know an example of one grandmother in or well, I, I you know I'll keep names out but um and and actual relations you know one of them is uh is doing yoga all the time and and she's up and um she can chase around a, a six-year-old and she can chase right. around a three-year-old and uh drives no problem and you know she's you know, she'll nap and whatever, but she's, you know, she, she's in her mid seventies, you know, mm-hmm. late, late seventies now. Yeah. Um, and another, uh, another woman about the same age in, in our lives is, um, you know, barely walking, you know, she's, mm-hmm. you know, she carts a wheeled walker around and, uh, you know, has trouble walking up the stairs to her condo. So, it's it's a matter of how young you want to be is you, sure. you have you have the option yeah you have the option and and you you could you could choose you know there's some certain realities to it uh but yeah. uh you know i mean but at the end of the day you can still optimize your life in many different ways if you so choose to but if you are uh you know part of also is is that i don't believe uh that there's anything called status quo. You're either getting better or you're worse. You, you just, it's, it's not possible <laughs> to maintain the status quo. It's, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just. Well, and if you maintain where you are, you're getting better, right? Well, I don't know if you're well, getting better because, because if you're trying to maintain, I guess where if you're, you're are, in, I guess if you're in a good place, if you're, yeah, I mean, yeah, maintaining you know, where you are, then you're getting better. You're continue you're continually trying to get better, you know, against your something. cohort. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kind of in line with this, uh, let me know if you want to veer off this line of questioning. But I saw your uh, recent post on the Order of Man Facebook page, oh, okay, uh, where you had a, a bit of a of a change in your uh, exercise data. Yeah, uh, yeah. You want to go into that, and have you figured out what that meant yet, or are you still kind of searching that out? No, I'm still in the whole thing. Uh, one of the, the the worst things about uh, moving. Uh, is uh, finding new doctors mm. in where you're living. Okay, and that's that's uh, that's the thing. And I mean, I I grew up in Phoenix. I we I lived in Phoenix from 1960 till 2018, except for going away to school at various times. Uh, that was that was home. I, I my my office was uh, uh, in Phoenix was uh, about two and a half miles from where where I, my the house I grew up, and I lived in the same you know neighborhood. Uh, so I was very parochial and I, and a lot of the doctors I knew, and I was, I had, I was on a first name basis with just about every one of my doctors. Uh, and I'd give them shit too. Uh, mm-hmm. one of them, I, I walked in and he, I said, Greg, you got fat. Uh, that was the first words. I didn't even say hello. I said, Greg, you got fat. <laughs> makes your doctor very happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he would no, know. And he was like, oh, he said, I don't know what's happening to me. He, he was, and, and uh, he, he was actually kind of interesting because he was just turning 40. Uh, and he just says, I got no energy. I got the, I go like, you need testosterone. 
<laughs> and uh, he, he called me up about five months later and said, like, oh, that was what that was great. Thanks. He's got on it and lost about, uh, you know, uh, 20 pounds and was get, got back in the gym, had energy and vibrancy and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, that post, it was, it was very interesting. Uh, I have up until just recently, I've had this idea. I knew it, it intellectually, I knew it wasn't r- correct, but from a emotional attitude standpoint, I had an air of invincibility about me in my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, it was, I, it didn't, you know, I, I didn't, it's not that I was like view myself as being like a really tough guy or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I had an air of invincibility and I was, I was my life. My wife was laughing like, Oh my, I, I said, you know, you know, given my gene pool, I think I'm, you know, a good chance I'm going to leave till 110, 120. And she was, oh my God, I don't think I can spend that much time with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, uh, uh, so, and I, and I got to tell you, I have a, uh, I have a great relationship with my wife and, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, we, we work on it too in, in, in all different areas. And so, uh, so I, I got this, my daughter gave me this Garmin watch for for uh, christmas and uh i'm my plan is to to do a spartan race in november with her i've never done one and i, I want to do one and what i've noticed when i was out running was my heartbeat would just shoot up to like 155 160 and you know just like right up there and i was running the same two miles without building any stamina and so, uh, and the same thing in the gym when I'm lifting, I, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I look at my, you know, it's like, like, you know, 155 is my heartbeat. I'm going like, what the hell is going on? And, uh, and like two years ago, two, two and a half years ago, I mean, I was, I was with my youngest daughter in New Zealand and, you know, we were going up and down hills with 50 pound packs for, for four days, <laughs> you know, for, for five or six hours. Uh, Cause it was a, like, it was a, a, a preserve and you had to, Basically, there was no water. There was no food. You had to carry in and carry out everything you bought, you brought with you, uh, including your camping gear and everything. And so I just like, so I started, uh, I went to my cardiologist in, in Scottsdale and, you know, all the tests that they're doing is coming back fine. There's the, they're telling me, you know, they did a, they checked for my arteries around the heart. Uh, they said, you know, there's no calcifications. The guy said, though, there, there could be soft plaque, which would not show up on the test. Uh, but all, you know, everything is coming back fine. But I got this issue of this, this heart rate that just goes insane, but I have no chest pain. I have nothing else. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. So I'm in the process right now. I have an appointment with a cardiologist here in Las Vegas. Uh, I know there's going to be lots of other tests. Uh, I actually going back to my pulmonologist because if, if all these cardiac tests come back, then I have to start looking at, at other things. So that to me is actually the first time I've really actually, uh, confronted my mortality. It, 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 I felt that way. Like I, I felt, uh, vulnerable, to to uh to to, to death and i, I it, it was it's kind of an interesting thing and uh so that that was, that was the genesis of that of that post and and i used to, uh i i have a i have a routine that i go through you know, in the morning and one of the things that that, uh, that i look at is the, the the statement is that you have less time than you think and when i wrote that a year ago i didn't i i I'm looking at that going like, I hope that's not prophetic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hope that's, I hope that's not, I, I said, I hope that's not, not the, uh, you know, it's like, going, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's to me, it's, it's more, it's, it's about as irritating as anything else. Cause at some point you want, you know, you go out and you're working out, you go run, you want to gain stamina. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that's, that's like, yeah, and I've gone from, you know, from, uh, you know, was it a long time ago? This is like, uh, was it 19 years ago, 18 years ago, uh, for my 50th birthday? No, not my 50th, it was my maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, I, I was again, I blow up and I shrink down. So I again got up to 230 pounds. And this, a friend of mine told me I was, I was so fat I could never go with, on this trip with him. And the trip was to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. 
And so I went, got down from two thirty to one sixty five. And yeah, yeah, it was, I was, I was all, and I, I, I was like, and I, it was all legs. I mean, I had no like up, upper bottom strength. It was just like legs. And then I was going up and down this place called uh, Squaw Peak in, in Phoenix. That, and I'd go up three times up and down in the summer and the heat and everything else. But I was like, it was all legs. I mean, I, and, uh, uh, so I, I know what it takes to get healthy, to get in shape. And so it's not happening. It's, it's not happening as I've done it in the past. And so I'm finding this particularly frustrating. Uh, it's frustrating to the point where like somebody's like, do you really want to even go and work out because there's no upside to it? You know, it's, right. it's like going, it's like going to work and not getting paid. <laughs> right. if, you're, if you're jumping right into that, Max, heart, I mean, you know, for reference for, for our listeners, you, you, an average maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age, which puts your which puts that above a max effort for you, 155, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and then I, I know that, and I don't really understand VO2, but my VO2, uh, and that's why I, w- I want to get back to my pulmonologist. That's the guy I called fat uh, uh, to, to talk about that because mm-hmm. uh, because I'm, I'm starting to get the idea that, that it may not, the, 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 uh, the uh, rapid heartbeat upon exertion may be a, a symptom of something else. Gotcha. In, in terms of the transference of oxygen uh, in, the, in the lungs and things like that. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll get back on track because uh, yeah. I, I know that uh, Joe DeSena, who runs the Spartan races, is, uh, is, is very keen on helping people get as healthy as they can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, I've, I've heard some interesting podcasts with him. Yeah, <laughs> he's. I actually read his book a while back. He's a he's an interesting guy. Good, you, you, like you, you said your birthday was in October. When, when's your birthday? October eighth. Eighth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, mine's in uh, October. And like, make sure you, we did have the same birthday because yeah, I was gonna have to start following you a lot closer. <laughs> 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 mine's in twenty four. So for uh, for all us old farts out here who uh, actually want to. You know, because I watch Josh. Josh prepares for all these races. I got no desire to do you know, a marathon, except every once in a while. It's like, what would it be like? Eh. But when you're uh, talking about not getting old, I'm guessing the first thing you get had to approach with your mindset. So what did it take you uh, to get your mindset to, to the point where, you know, you're not old. You're going to do this thing. I think it's the desire to be better every day. That, and that's, that's a question I ask myself in the morning. I have a, a little ritual I go through is what, what do I, there, there's two questions I like to ask myself. What is the most important thing I need to do today? And what do I have to do today to be a better version of myself today than I was yesterday? And I, I do meditation, you know, and all that stuff. I, I'm not, no, no incense or anything like that. And I can't, I, for the life of me, I can't cross my feet like they were supposed to. Like, you know, they got that pose and everything else. I can't do that shit. Uh, I do this, the old guy, uh, sit down in a comfortable chair meditation. Uh, and breathing, breathing is the most important part of, of the med- of meditation. And so, uh, and I go through journaling and, and I kind of, kind of talk. That's where you talk to yourself, you know. Uh, answer questions. Sometimes you, sometimes you're nice to yourself, and sometimes you have really pissed off conversations at yourself. Yeah, <laughs> like why did I do that? Uh, that was pretty stupid. Uh, so, so uh, I think that's it. I think it, you know, it's it's the mental state of, of working to be better every day. And if, if I if I stop that, then I'll be on a downward spiral. And that's being better uh, spiritually. Uh, being better in terms of, of business, uh, being better in terms of your your relationships with your with your family, uh, all those areas, and, and also in with your uh, and physically. So the, you cover those four areas, and it takes work. There's no doubt about it. It takes it takes work. Uh, it doesn't come easily. I mean, we have a uh, you know relationships. We have, I have a great relationship with my wife. I have a great relationship with my two daughters, uh, even though we don't, they don't live in the same city that we do. And uh, my, my wife does, but I mean, uh, but my daughters <laughs> don't. Uh, there's, a while, there's a time when we had a commuting marriage for a short while, very early on. Um, and so, 
I mean, like the thing about you know my my daughters. Uh, once a month, uh, we sit down and via Zoom we have a virtual happy hour. I sit down, have a uh, have a cocktail. They have a cocktail. I have a cigar, and we went once a uh, when, when, you know once a month. I think it's about right. I think you try to do too often. If you do too often, it just doesn't work. Right. Uh, but what, once a month is 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 just about the right amount of time. And we we sit and talk for about an hour, just them. And I just start to include uh, my oldest daughter's uh, boyfriend in the rotation. Looks like looks like he's going to stay around. So so I'll put the effort in. If he, was, if he was not going to stay around, fuck, I wouldn't care. Uh, <laughs> I, that's not true. That's not true. We 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 actually actually we still keep track of some of our, our, our other daughters. Uh, uh, boy, it was he was our boyfriend, not her boyfriend. He was our boyfriend. <laughs> Y'all liked him more than your more than no, your daughter. No, no, no. We liked our girl a lot, but we, he was, but he was our boyfriend. But I mean, but I mean, you liked him more than she did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, at the end, yeah. Uh, but but uh, it was it was it was it was funny. So so you do that. Uh, I mean, we spent a lot, our my wife and I spent a lot of time working on uh, on each other in, in terms of and supporting each other. And uh, a lot of times, there are times that that uh, what I'm doing is the most important thing, uh, and there's times that what she's doing is the most important thing. And so we have to be cognizant of it. And there's times that we have to, uh, you know, we have to work on things as a couple. Yeah. Cause so, uh, so I think being conscious about that, being conscious about the relationships. How did you uh, handle the transition from you being, well, I guess straight to, you know, being an older empty nester. Yeah, because you, uh, you know, your your daughters left home when you were already of in a retirement age. Correct. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, the way that well, like my parents were twenty four and twenty eight when I was born. I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody's out of the house by the time they were yeah you know, in their you know, mid forties to to early fifties. Uh, and and like I said, I'm I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be of retirement age, though I probably won't be retired. Um, you know, my mid sixties. By the time any kids are out of the house, uh, how do you, how did you handle kind of transitioning both out of out of job and out of kids in the house? The uh, the kids out of the house uh, kind of happened slowly. Uh, because we were, uh, my one da- oldest daughter left and then my youngest daughter left two years later. And, uh, at that point we were, uh, already working. I kind of started this whole, this whole thing that I was doing here, this old guy talks. And mm-hmm. then my, my wife had been, uh, prior to, uh, and, and early on in having kids, she used to be a corporate attorney for a, a big time law firm in California. And, uh, then, uh, she did the, the mommy track she served on the, as a, on the board of directors for an insurance companies, some other things that she did while, while was not doing her legal career. And then she, she went back into, into, into working. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and uh, so she started working again, which I think was actually really good uh, for us. Uh, it's been good for us you know, in a lot of different ways, including the fact of money. Uh, and uh, so, so that, that was it. And we just, Decided we're you know there's certain things that we do there's certain things that we do as a couple, and there's certain things that we do individually, and uh, my wife gives me a lot of space to do stuff. Uh, she doesn't. She will actually sometimes will say like you need to get out of the house and go smoke a cigar. And she will like say you need to get out of the house and smoke a cigar. Uh, and like I said, there, 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 like there are times that 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 uh, uh, I know that she's doing something that's really, really important. And so I'm, 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 I'm there supporting, Mm -hmm. I'm there in a a supporting role. And, uh, so, and then there are times times that that she's there in supporting role for me. Uh, I think a lot of times people don't do that. I think people don't, don't take time to really understand that. And my, my wife's got pretty high pressure job now and she loves it. I mean, she, she likes intensity. Uh, so she, uh, uh, she sells, uh, mid market companies, 
you know, from five to a hundred million dollars for sale price. So she's got uh, the deals that happen, uh, happen. Uh, they're not, they're pretty, they're pretty intense, especially the closer to the money changing hands, uh, mm-hmm. the more intense it gets because people just want to make sure everything's right. Uh, and she's, she's, she's really, she's really good at that. She's been very successful. The, you know, the, the other thing is that we've made sure that we work to stay in shape and that, that we talk. And I think people, uh, mind reading does not work. <laughs> mind reading does not work. I've tried it. I, I can tell you, uh, uh, I, I trained in the Soviet Union under for mind reading. No, I did not. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And mind, mind reading does not work. And, you know, and, and the other thing uh, that, that uh, actually I have a, we're, I'm working on a webinar, should be ready in about uh, 90 days. Uh, do not have conversations, important conversations when you're drunk. Uh, and, and do not have important conversations when you're drunk and pissed off. Uh, that, that's really not, that's not, that's, that's a formula for a uh that's a formula for uh, divorce that's that's really it and the, the other thing is um uh, and this is kind of my pontification here um uh, how do you show up in the relationship who are you 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 see this a lot of times and this is true of men and women uh this is kind of a universal thing is like they'll they show up and they're kind of like a whatever, you know, not particularly pleasant person, da, 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 and, you know, and then they go, then they, then the, the other person gets all pissed off at him. So they're both like fighting, fighting, fighting. And then they end up getting divorced. And then they each end up marrying essentially the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and they repeat that cycle. Right. And they, they they just repeat it and repeat it, and they, you know that, that's how you that's how you end up with three exes and, and a girlfriend. Uh, you know, you go like, okay, I'm not getting married anymore. Uh, you know, and, and so so where what's the saying goes? Uh, uh, wherever you are, there you go, or wherever you go, there you are. Wherever you go, there you are. And and so I, I think a lot of times you just kind of think about how am I showing up here? Am I showing up as a as a nice person that? somebody would want to be around or am I showing up as an asshole? You know, it's, it's, it, you know, and, and getting that, uh, that, that bouquet of roses and flowers and that uh, price fixed dinner on Valentine's day ain't going to change the course of your life. You know, it's, it's what you do every day. It's what you do every day. And we don't, I mean, we don't, we don't celebrate. I mean, we do celebrate, uh, 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 Mother's Day and Father's Day, but most of the Hallmark holidays, you know, we're like, no, thank you, and and we don't go out on those days because everything is always well, restaurants are jam packed and the, and everything's overpriced. You know, everything, you know, the, you know, Valentine's Day is like the worst day to go out to dinner somewhere. Yeah, you also, know, uh, Valentine's Day was our first date, uh, uh-huh. which I think was a setup because we were going to have a singles pity party. A bunch of us in bowling league and, and my wife and I were the only two who showed up. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm in the same way. I don't want to, I don't want to try to book a restaurant on, you know, on or near Valentine's day, especially because that winds up being like restaurant week in a lot of places and everybody uh. does their, you know, like you said, they, they do have a fixed price menu and, and it winds up being food that they don't normally serve. So they don't even do it well. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, no, I don't want to try. I don't want to try your, the stuff that you got famous making 51 weeks a year. I don't want to try the stuff that you do for less money this one week a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but you know, every, every celebration, you know, we, we try to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate our wedding anniversary and our, uh, and and Valentine's Day, but we do that with we do that with a charcuterie board at home and yeah. and a steak, yeah, you know? yeah, and and that that's especially nice now that we have a young daughter. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to find uh, a babysitter uh, unless we want to. <laughs> no. Yeah, I would actually. Though, you know, we always did even when, um, but we didn't have a babysitter. We were fortunate enough to have a nanny. Um, but we always, you know, one one night a week, we always went out, 
Nice. Uh, had a date night. And I think that's an important thing to do. That is important. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. And, uh, so we, we always, we always d- did that. And, uh, I should say always, but pretty frequently, pretty frequently. Yeah. We make sure we have connection time with, you know, a few nights a week after, after the girls in bed, you know, we try to stick to an eight o'clock bedtime. So that gives us some good time. I work, I actually work nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I work weekend days. So, uh, you know, for my day job. So, uh, you know, that gives us you know, basically three, four nights a week to, you know, to really spend together. And, uh, I work from home, so it's night, you know, I'm not, I'm not out until three 30 in the morning uh, right. working, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in the garage, you know, so, you know, they, they come hang out and, you know, on a slow night, I get to, I get to interact plenty, which is, which is also nice. Um, but yeah, and it, I I like what you said earlier. I did the same thing. You know, coming into this into a marriage you know, in my late thirties, I knew who I was. I I was done with the. I didn't need to party anymore. Just, who cares? <laughs> you know, I didn't feel trapped. Um, but Kelvin, I'm interested uh, in hearing how you take that since you had a different path through your marriages. <laughs> I've had a little different path. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that whole thing about the three wives and a girlfriend. Uh huh. I'm not sure where I am past that, but the three wives are gone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, uh, you know, my path is a little different. And I personally, I thought I was a good guy, but, you know, maybe, maybe I wasn't as good as I could have been for the first one. But, you know, you learn, you learn after that. But, um, I've been okay. single now for uh, 2004 was the last time. So uh, part of that habit I've stopped doing. <laughs> so I'm getting married. Again. But it, I, in 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 the other parts of my life, the relationships, I like being in my friendships. I show up like that. Um, I don't have a, um, a a lot of intimacy right now, but. As a human, I like to show up for people. So I've got a lot of I've got a lot of friends, and I like to show up. And although sometimes I have had days when I thought I knew everything, um, I recognize I've known. I'm a life coach, and so now I ask way better questions than I used to. Mm-hmm. So, but I enjoy the part where I I like to I like to spoil people. I like to make them feel good. I like to make them feel special, uh, and I do that to the to the best of my ability. For most of the people that I know, mm-hmm. you know, whether or not there's an intimacy involved or whether it's just, you know, us hanging out, like, uh, in my relationship with Josh, he and I have been friends for a long time. Like I knew him before his, his, his wife did not in a biblical sense, you understand, but, uh, <laughs> and I'd like to think I actually played a part in getting them together, but I like to take credit for stuff. Okay. Um, but I've, I've watched them grow over the time. And it's like, it's awesome. They just really, really love each other. And, uh, and, and, they're, and, they're, good, and they're good people. But I like being nice to people anyway. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of what I do. There's a lot of people who think I treat them special. Um, uh, I don't know if I'll have another relationship. But I'm pretty happy with me as a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, we could. Uh, last week, I went out to breakfast and and some energy I hadn't seen in a while. I was like, oh, well, oh, this, this could be fun. But generally speaking, you're right. I, I am who I am. I've learned that over, over mm-hmm. time. And I make sure people know who that person is. I used to be on good behavior for a while. And then I'd like to wake up later. And I said, nah, just get that over with right up front. <laughs> get no. it over with right up front. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, don't That's skip the good behavior. This is who I am. Yeah. And if you don't like this, well, it's, it's okay. I mean, that's, yeah. that's fine. I, I like it just fine. So um, that's, that's kind of where I am. I'd love to have another relationship, I think. But I know who I am these days. I also know who I'm not going to give up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a, that's a conversation. That's not... Uh, I'm going to do all this to make you happy. And then later we're going to flip that around. No, this is, this is who I am. You got to like this guy. here, Right. And I'm pretty, I'm 
I'm I'm going to be 68 in October. So okay, uh, talk about being set in your ways and being old. I'm 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 pretty much there. Mm-hmm. But on a whole, I love life. I love people. Josh, I don't know if that answered your question or not. Oh, I mean, I was wondering how it was hitting you, and I, I think you answered. <laughs> oh, I love, yo, yeah. I mean, I love everything you're saying. I've like, watched you guys. Hey, again, the, the the you I'm looking at right here, it, it, uh, or it's just not the um, <laughs> it's not the guy on the on the website, which is okay, which is probably good. I probably live longer that way because the guy on the website, I might be scared. Of. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice. To, it's nice to. Uh, it's nice to it's nice to hear that, and it's nice to know that uh, people are, make those relationships these days. Because I know I've, I've known a lot of relationships where yeah, have, they they don't they don't get each other at all, and I don't even know how they stay together the twenty minutes to take them to get married. You know? That's funny that you said that. So what what did you what did you think you were going to find with the guy on the website? Yeah, yeah. Who oh, you know, you know, the, the picture is great. It, you know, I guess <laughs> I guess that scotch coming out there with the cigar and the dark glasses. No, uh-huh. like, oh, this is going to be an interesting conversation we're going to have today. So, um, but you didn't bring out the uh, the submachine guns or anything. You know, coming out of Vegas. So I'm like, oh, this is a little bit different than I expected, which is yeah. nice. But I see, um, I see the combo now because it's it's uh it's uh, it, I mean it's great. You're uh, you're a, a mild mannered, well, except for the times when you're not, what you tell us about. <laughs> you know, you know who you are. And I yeah. think probably one of the biggest problems in most relationships these days is that people get together who don't really realize who they are. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to be and, you have to know who you are. And 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 they want to pretend to be somebody that they thought they were, and then they get in a relationship and that doesn't that doesn't work. So uh, yeah. I've had enough time to figure out who I am these days. I know I know what my tolerances are, uh, and 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 I know what I'm willing to uh, to uh, you know compromise on for the person that is what to compromise. Glad I met you though, and didn't just go off the. the <laughs> I, I I think that, 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 that that's funny because I get I get so many different kinds of reactions to, to that picture. <laughs> that it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah it's the, good though. Some people refer to that as as the uh, the boss man picture. Uh-huh. Uh Yeah, you know, and uh, you know. Well, see, I think a lot of people see that as aggressive, and I just see relaxed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I can see it as, as both. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm. I'm so I know. Uh, well, I mean, I know that when I pour a glass of scotch and have a cigar, it's because I'm, I'm in a happy place. I'm zoned out. I'm. Oh yeah, I'm, like, I'm done with all the work that needs to be done, and I have a couple hours to just chill. <laughs> yeah. The last time I saw you in that mode, you were it was it real at your wedding? Because I remember the cigars on the deck. And- <laughs> yeah, yeah. After after <laughs> most of the people had left, we went out in the back and we, we went out on the deck and had a cigar and and a bottle of bourbon and. <laughs> Yeah, we'll yeah, let I mean, you know, however, that mine is likely going to be yeah. Southern Comfort. I'm not sure. Either. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's kind of interesting because uh, I think also the, the, the sunglasses also make it a little bit more intimidating. <laughs> Keeps the smoke out of your eyes, though. <laughs> um, Orest, I want to be respectful of your time and energy here. I know we're, we're poking over an hour at this point. Um, but what do you uh, a couple of couple of kind of wind down questions? What do you wish? Uh, you know, what do you see in the world that and that you wish people would do differently? Yeah, you know, whether this is young people or middle aged people or older people or um, all of them. You know what 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 do you? You know, obviously you've got this brand, so you're 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 looking to to help other people improve what what do you what do you wish that uh people would do differently um i wish people would take responsibility for their life i think too many times people and and i've i mean i've i've done this i, I there was a point in my life where i did it uh where i had a, a victim conversation going on inside my head 
and that I was it, it was that I was powerless. It, and this, this the saying goes, you know, it's not an original idea on my part here, but you can't, to some extent, you can and can't control events, but you can't control how you react to them. And so many times people will do the, the victim conversation and they'll have, uh, they'll take no responsibility. And a lot of times that conversation happens inside their head and they use words like, I can't, you know, they made me do it. Uh, you know, all of those things are all to me are, are surrender your power phrases that you have in your, in your head. And uh, they're, they're easy to get into in, in your head. And so once I start changing that conversation in my head, uh, that's really when, when I did it. And the, I think, uh, um, again, it goes back to, uh, we're, uh, we were great fans of Tony Robbins of more so a long time ago, about 15 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, went to several of his live events and things like that. And he talks about the power of questions and I'm sure it's not, I'm not sure it's not an original concept, but ask yourself, the question you want answered. You know, if you ask yourself, why am I doing, let's say for an example, okay, let's say, why am I drinking too much? Your mind will give you an answer. And it won't, it'll just reinforce that behavior versus you can ask yourself, how do I stop drinking so much? That's kind of better, but it still kind of takes the same thing. You might ask yourself, what can I do to replace drinking as a habit? And that, then you'll get different answers. Or So so it's, it's, kind of, it's an interesting thing, but the power of questions, I think, is important. But as I said, the, the, the biggest thing that I see people, um, and I was in, in Clubhouse uh, on these things, and I just, I just couldn't I, – I was going to reply, but I have this rule like – don't don't reply after you've had your second scotch. Uh, yeah. don't, don't 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 hit the send button. Uh, wait wait in the morning because uh, the probably you're probably going to change that. And so I just wasn't. But everybody was saying like you know there's this group of people like saying well that person was thinking this. And I'm like you don't have a clue what they're thinking. You know oh yeah they looked at me weird. You know like you know I like people weird all the time. But most of the time I'm not thinking about other people. I'm thinking about myself. Most people don't have enough time. Most people don't have time to think about you because you are irrelevant to their life. And the fact that it's kind of narcissistic to think that they're sitting there thinking about you, <laughs> you know, they're, no, they're not thinking about you, you know? And, and so, and so I, th- I think that that's kind of a, a funny thing that, that people are, are so sensitive about what, you know, and why should it matter to you? What I think about you? Why, why should it matter? You know, unless I'm actively engaging in you with you, uh, and, and being you know derogatory or whatever or, or complimentary, uh, what I think about you is irrelevant most of the time. You know, I, I mean, for us, you know, in our podcast, yeah, it, it, what our audience thinks is is important. Yeah, it's important, but on an individual basis, most of the time, it's really not important what people think about you, and and why you would fixate on that makes you uh, basically if you're worried about what people are thinking then you your actions are going to be dictated by what you think they are thinking and so you become captive to to that idea and and so i, th- I think that's that's the that's the silliest thing and and th- the other thing is to, to be there's a big desire there's, there's a big orientation about being feelings focused yeah. You know, I feel this. How about getting results? Nothing makes you feel better than getting results. You know, you, you can you can get feelings all day long, but if they're are they based on reality? You know, there's 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 people that have you know feel really good because they have a really, really nice car, but they're bankrupt and they're they're just one payment away from getting it repossessed, but they feel really good. And it's like, you know, feelings are they're important, but they they don't outrank results. I guess that that's kind of that's that's the thing that I see that uh, every, everybody's focused on feeling so much, and uh, you know unless they're based in reality, I don't have much time for them. Well, people talk about feelings and people talk about empathy, and 
uh, and maybe confuse the two. Mm -hmm. uh, empathy, it's good to be able to, to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, technically, or at least you know, try to feel what they're feeling. But it's the feelings themselves, because we, we generate those inside our heads. Mm -hmm. I can I can sit there and you know before my meditations and I can I know what I can see what feelings are coming through and like where did where did where where did that come from you know what is that until we realize that we actually have control over that and and again that's uh, that's one of those things so empathy now you sound I mean I'm listening to you you don't may not focus on everybody's feelings about you, but I sense that you're a very empathic person. You 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 connect with people so you know who they are and, and can get to Yeah, I, uh, I do I, I like to connect with people, Kelly. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry if I Oh no 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 you're fine. Um I do like to connect with people and I enjoy being around people. Uh, and at the same time those that I'm particularly close, I'm very particular about who I'm hanging around with. Uh, the again, this is I'm repeating sayings that that I that are not mine originally, but you are the average of the five people you hang around with the most. I think that's that's very true. So I'm very particular uh, about who I have in my circle, close friends, and so so that's real important. But in general, I, I do tend to be uh, respectful, uh, courteous. Uh, I think that's that's important. That's just just this who, who I am. Uh, and I do want the best for people. I, I want them to do the thing, but I really don't, I, I, what I really don't like is when the, uh, when the victim mentality comes out, that's, that's really, uh, uh, because I know I, there's a certain persona about me now. Okay. About where I am and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. But I, I mean, I remember having to, uh, uh, return Christmas presents so I could pay rent and utilities. You know, I've been there. I've been there. We're, you know, worried about the, uh, the power being turned off and having to make that extra deposit to so get back on. Uh, so I, I totally understand. I don't totally understand that. And, but I just don't understand. Uh, when people do the victim thing, it, it just, it, 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 your people are better than that. If they can identify it in them, in themselves, because, you know, and there's a, there's a certain celebrity to being victim. You can tell a story and people feel sorry for you and the blah, 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 blah. But in the end of the day, is that, victim mentality is that going to is that going to put food on your table is that going to get you the car you want is that going to get you the house you want the relationship you want i mean you know i you know you know I'm <laughs> no i'm just laughing but oh, playing, oh, play, 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 <laughs> play 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 playing the victim card for sex uh, uh <laughs> oh <laughs> Everybody's done that. Everybody's done that. Don't then don't tell me. And, and 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 if somebody says, "Oh, I've never done that," I'm gonna go liar, liar, <laughs> liar. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, so, so it's 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 uh, yeah. And when you do it, it's not particularly good, sexy. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just I think that there's a what's it called a mercy or something. Uh, and, <laughs> and uh and so. <laughs> Yeah, it's you got scotch over there? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, yeah that's a little bit early for scotch. That's that's later on today. Uh so uh so so yeah, I think I think that that's probably the biggest thing is, is so many people are, are so uh inclined to play that the victim mentality that it's 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 a it's a sad thing and it's more and more prevalent. And I think part of it also is is that that People are being trained, uh, especially younger people, to not take care of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were all, you know, the age, you know, you know, you know I, I got I got beat up when I was a young kid, you know, on, on the playground because I, I was pudgy and uh, everything. Uh, but it 
you know, the, it, I became stronger over time and adapted and, and learned how to do things. Uh, but now everybody's supposed to go tell the teacher and the teacher doesn't do anything. And the, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's all kind of like, you're not being taught to, uh, uh, to, to take, uh, take care of your own environment. Uh, my daughter had a, my youngest daughter is pretty funny. Uh, this is, this is probably not the PTA uh, counseling advice, uh, but she uh, had switched schools and she went to a school and, and she's a pretty athletic girl. She's actually a very athletic girl. And uh, she had this boy was, 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 was going by and, and trying to knock her books down and, 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 and slam her into a, a, a locker and things like that. He was just, you know, just being a dick. Um, he probably liked her. That's probably why he's doing that. Um, and, and she was just, she was, she was getting pissed. And, I, and, and we were talking about that. And I, I, I said, this is what you do, honey. This is what you do. You, you have your, 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 your little pack of girls that you run with, you know, so there's like, like seven or eight of them. They're all pretty, pretty tight. I said, I said, next time he tries to do that, you turn around and you can tell him that if he doesn't, if he continues to do this, she's going to start calling him cockroach and she's going to get all her friends to call him cockroach. And this was the, they went from there from to senior in high school. And she said, and from now on your whole time here at this school, your name will be cockroach. <laughs> Guess who stopped? Because <laughs> he, because the kid knew that she'd get all, all those girls were just really, you know, kind of, you know, they, they, they were just like cockroach, oh, cockroach, hey cockroach. <laughs> and, uh, but pretty soon the whole school would be calling him cockroach. Yeah, and not something you want as a teenage boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you could get, you could get, you could, you know, you could get away with calling a kid cockroach. <laughs> it's, it's not a profanity or anything like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know my uh, my wife is at some point hoping to get us out to Vegas, so maybe I will uh, try to uh, find a race out there to train for, and we can oh, uh, connect. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Try one of those, and and then uh, go have a cigar after. And perfect. Um, where do you uh, where do you hang out on the web? Where do you like people to connect with you? Uh, you can reach me at uh, my my blog with the uh, badass picture is uh, old guy talks, <laughs> which is getting a big makeover. We're actually in the middle of a big makeover, uh, uh, so so that's going to be uh, changing. And uh, if you opt in, uh, I have to clean it up because I've been told that my uh, uh, the uh, I talk about raise three ways to improve your intimacy. Uh, that used to be. Uh, three ways to get laid more frequently without begging. Uh, and if you opt in, I'll share, I'll share those three things with you. And the other places to find me at the old guy talks to me.com. That's my podcast. Uh, what, uh, episodes go out uh, weekly and, uh, have some very, uh, has, you know, we talk about, as I said, we talked about testosterone. We talked about, uh, anti-aging peptides, stem cells. We talked about erectile dysfunction, uh, talk about menopause, vaginal deterioration and rejuvenation. We talk about scotch. We talk about scars, uh, porn addiction, end of life conversations, and lots of interviews on uh, relationships and sex, uh, which is of interest to a lot of people. Uh, I think the, the 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 sex part is is is, is pretty funny. Uh, in in a lot of re regards, because we always have a, a good time well, when I have a talk with various experts in the relationship and sex uh, space. Yeah. Great. And, well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we will let you know when this goes up. All right. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been great to meet both of you and have this wonderful conversation. And I thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with this old guy. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> thank you for taking the time to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs>